brothers and sisters in Christ. One day Jesus was ministering in his house and uh, there was a big crowd, so many that nobody else could get into the house. And so uh, it was in Capernaum and his mother and his brothers and sisters came out and wanted to see him. And they got word to, to Jesus that his mother and brothers and sisters were out wanting to see him. And he said, who is my brothers? And who is my mother and who is my sisters? And he said, all those who follow me. So really, it's not the blood that really makes us brothers and sisters. It's the blood of Jesus that makes us brothers and sisters. Amen. I mean, if, you, if you've got a brother or a sister in the, in the earth, and they're not living for God, you're not going to spend eternity with them. But if you have a brother and sister in Christ, you're going to spend all of eternity with them. Thank you, Lord. So we need to stand in the gap for our blood brothers and sisters so that, God, so that they'll be able to spend eternity with us. But we're going to spend all eternity with all of each other because we're, we're brothers and sisters and mothers. Amen. I mean, Barbara's my mother just like my mother's my mother. Uh -huh. The Bible says older ladies, and I know you're a little bit older than I am. So consider them as mothers. And, and those that are about your same age, consider them brothers and sisters. I mean, talk about in the church, all right? So in the church is not the building. The church is not the building. The people that are in Christ are the body of Christ. Yes. Those that are in Christ, we're all going to spend eternity together. You just need to make sure you're staying in Christ. Yes. You need to make sure you're ready when Jesus comes back. It says those that have this hope in themselves purify themselves as he is pure because they want, we want to have confidence on the day of his return, mm -hmm. that we are confident that we're ready to meet the Lord in the air. Praise you, Father. Praise and so he's mighty God. Yes, he is. We're, we're, we're uh, starting back in with the uh, series we're doing on kingdom principles. So this is kingdom principles part three. All right. Kingdom principles part three. Uh, let's pray. Father God, we just love you so much, Father. We pray you take this word, Father, and grain it deep within our hearts. Help us be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. I give you praise and glory. I pray, Father, you this word produces fruit in these people's lives. I pray that it does not go on, on any kind of ground but good ground, Father, that it may be fruitful and produce fruit in their lives. Yes, and I give you all praise. I come against the powers of darkness that would try to blind people's eyes to the word of God. Father, I thank you that you're, they have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. And yes. I just pray it right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank, thank you, Lord, Lord, that you anoint me to do this message, Father, to do this ministry, Father, and I give you all praise and all glory. You are mighty God. You are more than Hallelujah. enough. And you are worthy, Lord, of all of our praise Amen. and all of our glory. And I praise this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Mark chapter 16, verse 16. Luke chapter 16, verse 16. Luke. Luke. That's what I said, right? Luke. Luke chapter 16, verse 16. This is Jesus talking, so if you have a red letter edition, it will be in red. Luke chapter 16, verse 16. Or if you're there, say, I'm there. I'm there. And the law and the prophets were until John, referring to John the Baptist, since that time, in other words, since the time that John the Baptist came into the earth, now, John the Baptist came preparing the way of the Lord to make your way yes. straight. In other words, he preached, turn away from your sins and turn to God and forsake those old ways and start walking like God would have you to walk. Start doing what's right instead of what's wrong. In other words, he came to prepare. The, the new way in Christ is to live straight and to live narrow. Jesus said, straight is the way and narrow is the path that leads to eternal life. And few there be that find. In other words, it's a straight and narrow way, folks, to heaven. Jesus said, few there be that find it. Jesus said, wide is the path and narrow, narrow is the way. I mean, wide is the way and narrow is and wide is the path that lead to destruction. And many there be that find. In other words, there's a lot more people that's going to find the wrong way then it's going to find the right way. But they tell us how to find the right way to do what God tells us to do. And Jesus enables us to do those things that he commands us to do. He told people over and over, go and sin no more. Amen. He said, don't, don't sin. He, he would heal somebody. And he'd say, go and don't, don't sin anymore, lest a worse thing come upon you. That's right. Worse thing. So we're going to talk about some of that tonight. Jesus was preaching kingdom principles. Say kingdom principles. Kingdom principles. The law and the prophets were until John, 
since that time, no, since the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God. Now, we are in the kingdom of God right now. We are children of God. It says in Romans chapter 8, it says, you are, the Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs of God, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. In other words, we are engrafted into the family of God. We are part of one another. We are in the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. How about you? Amen. Amen. I've been washed in his blood. I've been cleansed by his spirit. Yes. We walk in the spirit, not after the flesh. And if we walk after the spirit, not after the flesh, then we have fellowship. Then we, if we walk in the light as he's in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But if we walk after the spirit, not after the flesh, for the spirit brings us life, but the flesh brings us death. Because the wages of sin is death. Yes. And we don't want to walk after death because that will send us to hell. Say hell. Yeah. Now I'm all those preachers that will tell you about hell, folks. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on now. They say don't preach against hell. Don't preach against sin. But Jesus preached against hell and he preached against sin all the time. Yeah. And Jesus preached kingdom principles. We are living in the kingdom of God. We need to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. Now yes. all of the apostles and prophets of the New Testament, they were all built upon the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. They had a foundation that was built upon the cornerstone of Jesus' teachings. And so they assumed that you had read the teachings of Jesus when they were teaching people. But they, they were teaching the, the things that were building upon what Jesus taught. Yes. So everything the Apostle Paul said was upon what Jesus said. That's right. So you have to understand what Jesus said to really understand what the Apostle Paul said. Because it's all based upon the, the teachings of Jesus. That's Jesus, right. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. People say, well, now God's a gracious God. Well, God has always been a gracious God. Yes, He has. He been. always has been. God, is, His will has never been that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God has called us to turn away from sin and turn to God and live for God. A lot of people say, well, now people say repentance just means to change your mind. No, you know what a repentance says? I mean, repentance means to turn away from what you were doing and do what's right. There's a scripture in the Old Testament, and it's, it's, still, it's still God saying this. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, humble yourself before God, mm -hmm. and seek my face and turn from their wicked, wicked ways, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Yes. And then will I forgive their sins, mm -hmm. and then will I heal their land. But that's the same God that, that was there that still is in the New Testament. Yes. God still in the New Testament. He brought judgment for unrighteousness in this life. This guy named Ananias and his wife Sapphira in the New Testament church in the book of Acts. They, they, did, they lied to the Holy Ghost under the anointing of the Holy Ghost that Peter was sitting there. And they came in to give money to the church. And they had done, tried to do a fraud upon the church because they wanted glory. For, and they told them that they sold the, all, all this, this pl place, they sold it, and people would sell property and they'd give it to the church to help the church. And so they had sold this piece of property, but they just gave a little bit of money to the church. And they said, we gave the whole amount to the church. And, and Peter knew by the Holy Ghost. He said, you're lying to the Holy Ghost, and he dropped over dead. And then the wife came in, and they, they had conspired together. And the wife came in and told the same story. He said, did you sell the property for this much? She said, yes. She said, they drug your husband out. They're going to take you out now. And she dropped over dead. That was judgment of God right there, folks. God is the same yesterday, today. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the creator. For all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. He was with God and he was God. Amen. It says in John chapter 1. And so Jesus was the creator, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Today is part of forever. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and today is part of forever. Amen. And so Jesus said the old covenant, the law and the prophets, were until John the Baptist. He said, since that time, the kingdom of God is being preached. And he said John the Baptist was the greatest of all, of all prophets, of all men that's ever lived. He was the greatest. He said, yet those that are least in the kingdom of God are greater than John the Baptist. That means you are greater than John the Baptist. Because, because you now you have the spirit of Christ in you. Amen. And under the old covenant, like the temple, the actual presence of God while they were following God, the actual presence of God entered into the Holy of Holies. It entered, he entered in there. 
And God did. And then, so what they did when they sent the high priest in, they would tie something around their ankle. They tie like a rope around. So in case they dropped dead, because if they had any unclean thing, when they got in the presence of God, they would just drop dead. And so they tied something around their ankle, so they'd pull them out. Because they couldn't go in unless they were holy. And so, and so, but now, the Bible says, when Jesus hung on the cross, there was a great earthquake. The Bible said, and the veil of the temple was yes, rent in twain from top yes, to bottom. I learned Lord. in Bible college, this, this veil was like six inches thick. And it could not be torn by, it could not be torn. It was so thick, it could not be torn. And so, God's hand split it from right down the middle, from the top to the bottom. And the Bible says, now God no longer lives in temples made with hands. Now, we are the temple of yes, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Our bodies are the temple you, of the Holy Lord. Ghost. You want to know where the Holy Ghost is? He's in you. Amen. Praise God. He's in you. And that's why those that are in, those that are part of the kingdom of God, any Christian is greater than John the Baptist. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the Spirit of God dwells in us, lives in us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And every man presseth into it. In other words, we have to press into the things of God. Yes. We have to press into what Jesus did for us. And he did much for us. He gave us many great and precious promises that by these we can be partakers of the divine nature, yes. having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. We can, we, can we can turn away from those old things. We can walk in newness of life, but it's only through Jesus. But we have Jesus in us. Glory to God. So we have Christ in us. Amen. The hope of Thank glory. He is in us. Say, Christ, Christ is, in me. is in me. I can do all things, can do all things. because he strengthens, me. he strengthens me. I'm the head and not the tail. The head and not the tail. I'm, above and not below. I'm above and not below. Everything I put my hand to prospers and is blessed. Is blessed. I, am blessed. I am blessed. I am healed, I'm healed. By, the by the stripes of Jesus. Jesus took my infirmities, Jesus took my infirmities. and he bare my sickness. And, bare my sickness. and with his stripes, with his stripes I, am healed. I am healed. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to God. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So, so do you see where Jesus said that the, all the old covenant law and prophets were until John the Baptist, and now the kingdom of God is being preached. Since that time, it's still since that time today, the kingdom of God is being preached. So we preach the teachings of Jesus so you can have build everything else upon the teachings of Jesus. But we need to understand what Jesus taught. We need to understand what Jesus taught. Now, a lot of people think, well, now, under the new covenant, it's a lot easier. What is in the, now you can live free from sin Amen. because of what Jesus did for you. Amen. But under the old covenant, Jesus, now Jesus talked about that now we're held to a higher standard than under the old covenant. He said, because much has been given, to much has been given, to much is required. Yes. Now he's given us these great and precious promises that are able to deliver us from Amen. the power of sin that enables yeah. us by Christ being in us. Now we can live like they couldn't live under the old covenant. That's right. I mean, uh, David was a great was a great man of God. He was a king. He was a priest. He was a prophet. And those, those three offices, kings, priests, and prophets, they all heard from God. Amen. He, he could hear from God, and he was a prophet of God. And he wrote, the, he wrote a lot of the Psalms Amen. in the book of Psalms. Thank you, Lord. Yet he, he was an evil man in that, in that he turned away from, from righteousness. He turned to commit, commit Adul uh, adultery with that, his neighbor's wife. And then he had his, her husband murdered. And they were judged. They were judged. They lost that child that they conceived in sin. They were judged in this earth. And then, then the king came to him. I mean, the prophet came to him. And he began to tell him about a man in his kingdom that had stole this precious thing from a poor man. And then, then David said, he shall be put to death. And then he said, you are that man. And then he changed his mind about him being put to death. Like and then he repented. And then God forgave him. Amen. If you truly repent from your heart, Amen. God will forgive you. Yes. But you have to truly repent from your heart. But now in the new covenant, Jesus said, this Jesus said this. We're going to read that in just a minute. Jesus said, under the new covenant, you're held to a higher standard. Now you don't actually have to do the act. Now if you just conceive in your heart to do it, but only God knows if you conceive in your heart to do it. If you actually conceive in your heart to do it, you're guilty already, even before you do it. Let's look at that. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. We'll start with verse uh, 27. We're going to read through to verse 30. Thank you, Lord. 
This is Jesus talking. Now remember, these are kingdom principles that Jesus was teaching. He said, because the kingdom of God now, since John the Baptist is being preached. Now it wasn't just those 33 years that the kingdom of God, but those, those three or four years. I mean, John the Baptist preached a few years before Jesus. He was six months older than Jesus. But Jesus didn't begin to preach until he was 30 years old. And then his ministry only lasted three years. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. In other words, do the act of adultery, right? But I say unto you, but I say unto you. And Jesus said, now a new thing. Now not only do you not have to commit adultery, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Now this word lust is a real strong word. It's not, well, she is sure nice. It sure may be nice to have her. That's not lust. Lust is, lust is I want her. I'm going to have her any way, way, way I can. It's kind of like the king, King David. He lusted after her. And then he, he commanded that they take her. And he had the power to do that. So he took her. And brought her to his chamber. And he had relations with her. Why? Because he was the king. He could do that. In other words, because of lust, he actually was able to, to commit that act of adultery. But many people can't commit the act because they just don't have the power to commit the act. And so, but Jesus said, if you have, if you have that in your heart to do that, and you would do it if you could, then you're guilty already. Yes. You're guilty already. Hallelujah. So be careful what you, what you conceive in your heart. Because it's a heart thing. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But, but it's through the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. So you can tell a lot about what's in somebody's heart by what they say out of their mouth. Amen. But I say unto you, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her in his heart. And if I write... Hand, if thy right eye offend thee. Now this word offend in the Greek. It's a Greek word that means literally. It's epithumio. And it means to determine in your heart. Uh, that's the word lust. It's a Greek word uh, epithemio. It's to determine in your heart to have at any cost. And it's root word is from, from covet. And then verse 29. says, and if thy right, hand, if thy right eye offend thee. Pluck it out. Now the word offend here is the Greek word scandalizo. And it means entice to sin. So Jesus said, if anything, basically, if even if your eyes or your hands, if they entice you to sin, he said, get rid of it. In other words, he was saying, no matter how, how precious something is to you, if it, it will cause you to sin, you need to get, get rid of it. If yes. anything that would draw you into any kind of temptation to sin, you need to stay away from it yes. at any cost. He said, even if it's your eye or your hands. In other words, he was, he was relating something that's very precious to us. Your eyes are very precious. Your hands are very precious. So he was relating that because he said, it's better for you to go into heaven, man, than to go into hell, perfect. Right. In other words, sin will send you to hell. The wages of sin is death, death separation from God. Yes. The wages of sin is death separation from God. Sin will send you to hell, but Jesus came to deliver you from yes. the power of sin, Thank you, and now Lord. he's able, you're able to walk away from sin. When you turn away from your sin and you turn to God, then God washes all your sin away. Everything you've done, he washes away, he cleans the slate. Now in Christ, you can live holy as he is holy. For without holiness, no man will see the Lord. We've got, now that's, that's who wrote that? That was Apostle Paul when he wrote that. For without holiness, no man will see the Lord. That's the word of God. The Apostle Paul, he was preaching the word of God. That's all based on what Jesus taught. So we need to learn what the principles Jesus taught. So we need to stay away from sin. Say, I'm going to stay away from sin. I'm staying away from sin. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. If thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it forth from thee. For it is, it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Say hell. Yeah. Hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. 
For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Hallelujah. Look with me to James chapter 1, verse 14. Now this is, this is, James is the brother of Jesus. James chapter 1, verse 14. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You see, the devil tries to draw you into your, your lust. He knows your weak areas, so he tries to draw you into those areas that are weak in your life. He tries to draw you into to lust. This is the same word lust that Jesus said that you lust in your heart. And the devil tries to bring you to that place of lust in your heart. Now, lust is not just for a woman, but it's a, Greek, it's a, it's a word that, that's linked to covetousness. In other words, if you covet anything where you want it above everything, that you love it more than anything, more than God, and you put it first above everything else, that brings, when you lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. So lust brings you to sin, and sin will bring you to death. Because the end of, of sin is death. That's right. So if, if you are in sin, you need to turn away from your sin and turn to God. You need to forsake those things and turn to God. And if you, and you do that, God cleanses you yes. from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord. He washes you white as snow. I hear all kinds of people say, well, if you're a Christian, you don't have to repent. You don't have to turn away from your sin. Listen, if my people, which are my people, if my people, mm -hmm. which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Amen. If you're in sin, you need to turn away from your sin and turn to God. And then God will forgive you your sins. Amen. Thank you. And then he'll heal you. Then he'll bless you. Then he'll redeem you. The, the story that Jesus told about the prodigal son. He was the son that was in his father's house. And he was relating this to the kingdom of God. He said, this is how the kingdom of God works. And there's a son that's in his father's house. And he went to his father. And he said, the father is like God. The father. He said, he said, this is how the kingdom of God works. And he went to his father, and he said, Dad, give me my portion of my inheritance. And so his father said, okay. So he gave him his portion of his inheritance. And then he went out, and he squandered it on riotous living. He bought whores and prostitutes. He spent it on riotous living. And finally, he had spent it all, and he squandered his inheritance. That is eternal life our inheritance is. And he squandered it on riotous living. And then finally, one day, he was feeding, pig, feeding the pigs. And he wanted to eat the, the, pig, the pig food. He was down at love. And the Bible says, finally, he came to himself. A lot of people have to hit bottom before they come to themselves. My brother, who was living for God, I mean, he, years ago, he, he said he lived for God years ago. But he told me, now he's really, truly repented and come to God. And he told me, I never lived for God. He said, all that time, I was just talking. I never really give my life to the Lord. But now, he sincerely gave his heart to the Lord. Yes. He's a different Amen. person. Yes, he is. He's not like he used to be. He's been delivered. He's been set free. He's been made whole. Amen. And God does that for everybody who truly from their hearts turns away from their old ways and turns to God. Yes. But before, he would, just, he would just do evil things and say, well, I know God's just covering me. Wrong. God don't just cover you. You need to repent. You need to turn away from your sin and turn to God. When he went to Christ for the nations, they said, I mean, for Teen Challenge, they said our, our method is a method of repentance. So they, they have to break everything off their life. And when I read that, when I read the manual, I thought, when he gets in there, he will not stay because they could walk away any time they want. But we, like Mom and, and Kimberly and them, had to pay $850 to get him in there, and they made him promise to stay. And so after he was there two or three days, he wrote my mother a letter. And he said, this is just like prison, only it's worse. He said, if, I, if, I, if you guys hadn't spent all that money, he said, I'd leave here right now, didn't he, Mom? Yeah. She still got the letter, right? But thank God that they were, they were willing to do that and that he was willing to hold it out. Because now he's been in, what, about six months total? And, and, that, and all, all that's now he's so on fire for God. He has these nasty tattoos on his legs. I don't know if any of y'all have ever seen those. These naked women, it's disgusting. And now he's ashamed of it. 
And now he wants me to try to find some way, you know, that he can get him taken off. Because he wants to cover him up or something. Because he don't want to be seen with those nasty things on his legs. Because he, he wants to be a minister of Christ. He yes. wants to preach Jesus Christ. Yes. He wants to help other people get delivered Amen. and set free and made whole. Praise Lord. you, Father. Thank so we you. need to stand in the gap for, for him to continue yes, to pray Lord. for him. Yes, because Lord. God wants to use him in a mighty way. Yes. But it took 41 years for him to get to that place. And he finally came to himself. But he had to hit bottom. He came to my mom's house and he was, he was on the verge of death. And he had to come to that place. And we, we began to pray for, for that kind of thing to happen. And he finally, he finally, he was either die or to repent or die. Either get right with God or die. Do not err, my beloved brethren. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no bearableness, neither shadow of turning. In other words, all good gifts come from God. And there's no variableness, neither shadow. God has never changed. There's no, no variableness with God. All the promises of God are yes, and they are amen, so let it be. All the promises of God are yes in Christ. But yes. it's in Christ amen. that we've been redeemed. It's in Christ we've been delivered. It's in Christ we've been set free. It's only through Jesus Christ who can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other out I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Turn with me to Luke chapter 12. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory Luke chapter 12, verse uh, 47 and 48. And he's talking about servants that are, that are either living for God or not living for God. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. And this is a principle that Jesus is getting ready to say here. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. In other words, when you've been given much, you required much. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And have we been given much through Jesus Christ? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. We've been given much through Jesus Christ. Right? Amen. Thank you, Lord. You've been great, given the greatest gift of God. Amen. You've been given not only the power of to be your sins be forgiven. Under the old covenant, they could get their sins forgiven. But there is no power in the blood of bulls and goats to take away the sin nature from man. Right. There was no power under the old covenant, under the blood of bulls and goats. So God had to send his own son, Jesus, and it was through his blood that not only does he forgive our sins, which we could get that done under the old covenant, but now the power of sin could be broke in yes, our lives. Yes, thank you, Lord. Now the power of sin, by the power of Christ, the power of sin is broke in our life. Why? Because he bare our sins in his He's own right. body on the tree. So we Thank could be you, dead to sin yes. and live yes. under righteousness. Amen. Paul said in Romans, in Romans chapter 6, he said, How can we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And so here Jesus said, Too much is given of him shall much be required. And to him men have committed much of him will they ask the more. And so God gave us much. So that's why Jesus gave us much. That's why we're held to a higher standard now. Because Jesus did so much for Amen. us. Under Thank the old covenant, they were held to not as high a standard. Why? Because they didn't have Jesus. Because they didn't have Christ in them. Jesus, after he rose from the dead, the first thing he did was he went to his disciples. And he breathed on them. He blew on them. When he did, his spirit went into them. And they were born of the Spirit. 
They were born again right then on the, on the day that he rose from the dead. That's the first thing Jesus did. As he went to breathe his spirit into them. And then they became alive unto God through Christ Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then Peter, who was denying Christ three times, right when, he, right when they crucified him, they were going to crucify him. And he denied Jesus three times. And Jesus had said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. And so Peter thought, I'm lost. Amen. But then Jesus came and breathed on him. Hallelujah. Thank and you. Peter became a head of the church at that Amen. time. Amen. Glory. I mean, he wasn't like the pastor of the church of Jerusalem. James was the pastor of the church of Jerusalem. But Peter became a strong man in, in, the, in the mighty man of God. And he began, he went forth and he did mighty things. He preached one of the greatest messages that's ever been preached on the day of Pentecost after they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then he went, and then all this commotion, because of all this commotion, People came, and there was a lot of people in Jerusalem for the Pentecost, for the festival of Pentecost. And thousands of people went out there. And Peter preached one of the greatest messages. And there was either three or 5,000 people received Christ that day. Amen. And there was only 120 in the upper room. But they were making such a commotion. It was these holy rollers. <laughs> and word got out, hey, there's something going on over here. You know, it's kind of like seeing the fires going on. And there might have been a fire. They may have thought there was a fire because there appeared in them cloven tongues as a fire. It may have been like a fire going on. Mm -hmm. And people were running to see what's going on. And then Peter got up and he spoke. And he said, this is, no, this, is, this is that. These men are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last day, saith the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And on your handmaidens and your servants will I pour out of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Amen. And so that was the beginning. And then he went on and preached on and he said, and they said, what do we do? And he said, repent. Amen. Turn away from your sins and turn to God. Yes. He said, and then you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you. Repent. Lord. Then they'll be born again. Amen. The world cannot receive the Holy Ghost. The world can receive Christ, but they can't receive the Holy Ghost. Because you have to be born again to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, the word's clear about that. It says the world cannot receive him. The world can him, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a person. Him. But he's been poured out upon all flesh. For all now, the Holy Ghost works on every person in the world. Amen. We have to, we, it's really important that we know that because when you go and witness to somebody, you need to know that the Holy Spirit's already been there witnessing to them, already been there dealing with them about it before you ever get there. Because he deals with everybody about sin and the righteousness and judgment. I mean, the Holy Spirit tells them what's wrong, and, and if you're, you keep doing it wrong, you're going to be judged. They know it. They know it because the Holy Spirit's been there. If you have that understanding when you talk to somebody about Jesus, if you understand that, that's real important for you because then you know that the Holy Spirit's already been dealing with you. And you can say the Holy Spirit's been dealing with you. You can say the Lord's already been dealing with you. And they know it's true. They know it's true. Thank you. God's Word is true. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. So where am I at? Where are you? Luke 24. No, 12. I mean, Luke 12. Verse 48? Yeah. I'm done with that one, right? Mm -hmm. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. Thank you, Father. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. Now, I know there's a big debate about who wrote the book of Hebrews. Personally, I think the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. And I, I believe that because even though it's not say, saying who penned it, I believe the reason Paul didn't say he penned it was, now in some of the older Bibles it says the, the Hebrews up by the Apostle Paul in the title, but, but, and I believe the Apostle Paul did write it, but the Hebrew Christians, they didn't like Paul. Matter of fact, they were mad at Paul because he was going to all these Gentiles telling them they didn't have to get circumcised, they didn't have to observe the holy days, they didn't have to observe the Sabbath because all these things were nailed to the cross with Jesus Christ. These ordinances of the old covenant, they were all teaching what Jesus would do for us on the inside. You see, the, the circumcision represented the cutting away of the old man of sin. Now Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 6. 
How that our old man of sin has been cut away. And there were new creations in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we need to walk after the new man. We need to walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. So here, here uh, in Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 6. But now, say now. Now. Hath he obtained a more excellent ministry? But by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Now this word better is a Greek word that means stronger. It's kraton, and it means stronger. So the covenant that we have now under Christ, it's a stronger covenant. It's, made, it's a stronger covenant, and it's established upon stronger promises. That's what this verse says. It's a stronger covenant established upon stronger promises. Now, the promises of God are great and precious. It says in 2 Peter chapter 1, it says, through these promises that we have everything we need for life and godliness, and we operate in them by faith. We receive these things by faith. And we, by faith and patience, we receive the promises of God. And so we receive all the things that Christ has provided for us through, his, through, the, through the promises of God. It's by faith. And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we've been given the ability. Somebody just rode a bicycle by there and caused that door to open. And so we've been given the ability now through Christ to live holy life. And that, that, that is why we're held to a higher standard. Now, the thing is, it's not, it's not hard for us to do that because if we just set aside our will and just, and just exalt Christ in our life and trust God, then he does the work. He'll break the power of those things in your life. Yes. He'll destroy the power of those old, the old life, the old man. He'll, he'll, he'll put the old man, but you have to make, you have to covenant with Christ. You have to make agreement with the Lord to do, to do what he wants and to follow him. And then he, he gives you the ability by his power, his spirit in you, to deliver you, to set you free, and to make you whole. Amen. If you really want to walk away from old things, then, then he'll, he'll empower you to do it. And he, he commands us to live holy as he is holy. Now you say, oh, I can't do that. Well, you can't, but Christ in, you can do it. So you have to submit yourself to God. You have to hum humble yourself before God, submit yourself therefore to God, and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. In other words, he will you get your word of God in you big. And that takes some effort by you. I know it takes time to meditate on the word, get the word of God down in your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. We need to get his word in us because his word is the power of God. His word is the power of God unto deliverance. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto deliverance to all who believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now turn with me to Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. We have several scriptures we're going to read in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Praise you, Father. We're having, we're having technical problems with our soundboard or something. We're going to get it fixed or get a new one, one or the other. But it's, we're having some problems with it. Can you get me turned up a little bit, Daniel? Can, can you guys hear me? There we go. Romans chapter 6. We're going to start with verse 2. Now, really, if you just read all the way through Romans chapter 6, that will be good. Uh, but he, he says in verse 1, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And he said, God forbid, verse 2, How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So Jesus made it possible for you to be dead to sin, for me to be dead to sin. So we are dead to sin through Christ. How can we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ. Now baptized means immersed. In the new birth, we are immersed into Jesus Christ. Our spirit is joined to his. We are baptized or immersed into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism, by immersion, into death. Notice, Jesus bare our sins on the cross. He became sin. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God through Him. Amen. So we can live righteous. We can live and do what's right. Hallelujah. Because of what He did for us. 
Therefore we are buried with him in baptism, does life, and just like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Old things are passed away, now all things have become new. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Glory to God. Amen. Old things are passed away. Our old man of sin is dead and buried in the grave with Jesus. We've been raised up together with him in newness of life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let's look down at verse 11. He goes on to say that our old man, we're freed from sin, and our old man is dead and buried in the grave with Jesus. And now, now we should live under righteousness. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Say, I reckon, I reckon. I'm dead to sin. Now, when the devil comes and tries to pull you into sin, you need to say that. You need to say, I reckon I'm dead to that. I used to be like that, but I'm not like that anymore. Amen. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I'm made whole. Thank you, Lord. And then the angel of the Lord that's encamped around about you to deliver you, he'll help you to sustain you. Amen. He'll fight the devil for you. When you submit to God and you allow God's dead angel to move on your behalf, Amen. then he'll help you. He'll help, he'll fight the battle for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's look right down to Romans chapter 6, verse 22. Hallelujah. So Paul goes on saying how we're set free from all that. But now, being made free from sin. Say, I'm free from sin. I'm free from sin. Why? Because Jesus made me free from sin. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because he paid the price. It was a great price that he paid. Yes. It was a mighty price that he paid. He loved you enough to die not only on the cross, but to be separated from his Father God that he'd been connected to for all of eternity. He, he died for you. He was separated from Father God who died for you. Jesus died for you. And Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than this than for a man to give up his life for his, for his friend. Amen. And he said, You are my friend if you keep my commandments. Yes. Thank so you. we choose to follow Christ. We choose to make him Lord of our life. We choose every day. While it is today, we choose to walk with Jesus Thank Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We give God praise and glory in the midst of every circumstance in life. In Philippians chapter 4, it says, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And then two verses down from that says, Be careful for nothing. In other words, don't worry about anything. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, supplication means petitions, let your requests be known unto God. And the request there is a Greek word that's, that's also, it means to ask in faith. And it, Jesus said those who ask, it's linked to this Greek word request. And Jesus said everybody who asks receives. It means to ask and not give up. It means to hold on and not give up. But let your request be known unto God. And then the peace of God which passeth all understanding, will be able to keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Glory to God. You're a mighty God. Yes, Lord. The peace of God. Peace is good. Yes. Joy is good. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. The peace of God will help keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Glory to God. He's mighty. He's yes. strong. Yes. He's more than enough. Thank you, Lord. He's the all-sufficient one. Glory to God. He will help you to in, in, He'll help you to get where He wants you to be. Amen. Just let Him lead you and take a step at a time. Rest in the Lord. When bad things happen, just give God praise and glory. Just magnify the Lord. Just give Him glory and praise. James said in, in the first chapter, he said, he said, count it all joy. When you fall into divers temptations, that means all kinds of trouble. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And as you allow patience to have its perfect work, then you'll become perfect and entire, lacking nothing, wanting nothing, which means lack. But let him ask in faith. We need to ask in faith because if we don't ask in faith, if we don't stand and, and, stand and let, let our patience help us to, to keep holding on, 
holding on, then, then we can't receive anything from God. And so the devil's trying to get you to, to let your faith waver. He's trying to get you to get your faith waver. Because then he knows that you can't receive anything from the Lord. If your faith is wavering, Jesus came to man, he said, only believe, fear not. And he said, I do believe, but, but Lord, help my unbelief. No, there's things that can cause us to waver, but we need to hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful to promise. We need to hold fast to the things of God. We need to walk in his ways and not give up. When the enemy comes against you, you need to stand firm for God. You need to keep saying what God says. That's why we practice saying the word in this house. We say what God says. Because God's word will set you free. It will make you whole. You want to walk in the blessing? Start, start saying what God says. You're blessed. Start doing what God says. If you want to be free from, from worry, start doing what it says in uh, Philippians chapter 4. Give God praise and glory all the time. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Keep giving Him praise and glory all the time. The Apostle Paul said, when I am weak, then am I strong. When I give God praise and glory in the middle of my infirmities, then am I strong. So we need to do that. We need to follow these guys that learn how to walk in, in righteousness and holiness and purity, that learn to walk in joy, even when the enemy was attacking them. And then, then we have the victory. Then we have the victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he sought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Thank you, Lord. You're a mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I thank you for this word, Father. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. I thank you for this message, Father. I just pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that, that you'll help it, Father, to enter our people, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you that you are more than enough. I thank you that you this word does produce fruit and that it does strengthen us, Father, and we give you praise and glory. I thank you, Lord, because much has been given to us. I thank you, Lord, that we are able by your strength and by your power, Father, to be overcomers, to live pure and holy lives, and to, to be strong examples, Father, that the world may see Christ in us, that Christ may be formed in us, Father, that you may show yourself mighty in us and through us. Father, lead us and guide us by your spirit and by your power, Lord. Enable us by your strength, Father, by your strength, Father, to help us to do what you'd have us to do. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. We humble ourselves before you right now, Lord. Be big in us, we pray. In Jesus' name, you're a mighty God. You are worthy, Lord, of our praise. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, as we, as we go forth from this place tonight, Father, I just pray that you'll lead us and guide us like you said you would. And then enable us, Father. Give us boldness, I pray, O oh Lord. That we may boldly speak as you direct our, our lips, our path. Father, that we may boldly speak, knowing that the Holy Spirit has already been there, Lord. And just obe be obedient, Lord, to what you direct us to, to say to people, Father. And I give you praise and I give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Anybody need prayer here tonight? Anybody here need prayer?